What's up boys, it's about say so far, Jesus is the truth, and in today's video we're talking about why you suck in the game of Rainbow Six Siege. I'm not going to say all time, let's grind into it. Rolling into the first tip, we have a lack of accountability. This is the biggest widespread problem due to just the extreme level of pride of some people within this gaming community. I do not understand why it's so difficult for someone to admit that they played bad, or they just made one mistake, because even times... There's a guy who drops maybe 13 kills, 10 kills, or even just 9, and he's the top frag, right? Even then, they'll still sit there and act like they made no mistakes. If someone oh, dropped 10 oh, kills but died 4 times, they was. still died 4 times. And there's at least one of those rounds where they made a mistake. It's okay to admit your mistake. Now, there are obviously going to be other people within that match that made more mistakes than you, obviously. But... Even if you make the smallest of mistakes and the littlest of things go wrong, you still have to look at it from an improvement perspective and learn how to get better. If you sit there and just constantly try to pin everything on someone else or just ignore that you played bad or just, you know, just not even think about it, you're not going to be doing yourself any favors because you're not going to be doing any real improvement. If you constantly drop nine kills a game and die like five times, right, and you have really good KD, but you have a shitty win loss and you're like stuck in whatever rank you're in, are you really improving? Are you really a good player or are you just sitting there dropping worthless kills? You have to ask yourself that question. It's very, very important that you account yourself for the mistakes and the good things you do. If you do good things, hey, pat yourself on the back. Like acknowledge the fact that you play good. Like there's some rounds on stream where I'll die even if I got just one kill and I'll be like, I played that round to the best of my ability. I'll acknowledge how well I played. If I play like shit, I play like shit. Like, there have been times where I've gotten to 4K and I didn't kill the last guy, and I'm like, that's my fault. I don't care about my teammates. If my teammates don't help me, and I have to drop an ace to win, but I don't kill the last guy, that's my fault. It's not my teammates' fault. It's my fault. I didn't kill the last guy. So I have to constantly look at it from an improvement perspective, and that's the best way that I can get better. Moving on to the next tip, and this ties into the first tip as well, and that's the value of kills. Now, I talked about someone dropping like 9 kills, right, and then them dying like maybe 4 or 5 times. Now, 9 kills, 10 kills, 11 kills, like even double digit kills, they look good on the surface, but a lot of times those kills aren't actually as good as they are. I'm going to actually harp on myself a little bit. There was a game on Chalet the other day that I was streaming. And I was playing with a couple subs, and I had 10 they kills, right? Them. And we ended up losing, I think. And I was super mad. But then I realized a little bit after the stream that, honestly, yeah, most of those kills didn't matter. Ones. Because four of those kills were in a 1v5 attempt where I killed four people and did not kill the last guy. I almost did, but I did not. And it was my fault. I missed. Then the very next round, the same exact thing happened again, except it was a 1v3, and I killed two people. And I didn't die the last guy, but I couldn't find him in time. So once again, those two kills weren't very impactful. So six kills out of the ten kills I got weren't even of that much of an impact. Four kills were in winning rounds, but six of them were in losing rounds. Now, yes, I only died once within those two rounds of which I dropped six kills. And yes, my teammates could have played better, blah, 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 blah. But the value of those kills was not very high. And the value of those kills didn't ultimately matter for us to win the game. What mattered is the impact of the kills that which you get. For example, if some guy who frags out a lot, right, and he gets put in a 1v4 like two rounds in a row, and he kills like maybe three people each round, that's six kills, right? So let's spot. say he ends the game with like 10, maybe 11 kills. He gets a couple impactful kills here and there, but he gets like six kills that don't matter, right? And you're a support player. You go five and five, you know, you get one kill every round, and you guys end up losing one four, and you played like Thermite and Smoke every round, right? Your teammate who dropped 12 is going to call you ass. He's going to say, my teammates suck. Look at this. This guy went 5-5. Five and five. But all of your kills were impactful. Every single one of them. You made a difference within each round. You opened up the wall. You gave yourself and your team a chance to win. But everybody ended up losing. The value of your kills is equal to the guy that dropped double your kills. Because the value of your kills is the same as his. Those 6 kills he got in, in rounds that were lost... Do not matter whatsoever. And that's something the Siege community has to understand is that KD at surface level is not a valuable statistic. You can't judge someone based on KD because a lot of times the kills they get aren't even that valuable. Moving on to the next step, we have Intel. The amount of wasted Intel in this game is shocking to me. Even as you move up into higher ranks and as you move up into higher skilled lobbies, people just do not pick up their drones. I don't get how hard that is. Just pick up your drone, please. It's so annoying, or at least pre-place it somewhere. 
Like people will just waste their drone. People won't look on cameras. People won't play Intel operators. That's another thing that's like lacking is that Valkyrie used to be so popular when you could throw the camera outside. And even though they took that away, she's yeah. still one of the best oh. operators in the game. And people don't play her that much. It hurts my brain. Like, why are you sitting there playing Thorn, swinging everybody with a gun that you can't aim with when you could be playing Valkyrie and using Nitro Cell from below? There's so many valuable things you can do with Intel and that people don't get. Like, they just don't use it. And then there's also, you know, the drone problem. People don't pick up the drones. People don't place them. People waste them. Like, who? why, why do people drive the drone into sight in prep phase? Can someone tell me that? Because I don't understand. If you drive, I understand locating where the bomb site is. But if you have a microphone, which every single one of you do, you can literally just call out on the mic. Oh, they're on Armory, or oh, they're in Tellers, or oh, they're in Penthouse. You don't have to fucking drive your drone in there and waste it, because there's ten drones on the attacking side. Ten. That doesn't include if there's a Twitch or a Flores, right? Or zero. For example, it's just, it hurts my brain. Like, just make sure you guys are mindfully using those gadgets. Moving on to the next step, and that's communication. Now, I mentioned that all of you have a mic. 95% of you, 100% have a mic. Now, there's probably a couple weird people out there who use TV audio, and I'm sorry if you do. You're a trooper. Um, I don't know how you do that. But for those of you who do have microphones and don't use them, why? Give me one good reason as to why you're not using your mic. You need to be using your microphone in this game to have success. To communicate in this game and to play better, you actually have to call out. I know, it's shocking. It's like people don't know what that is. If you have a headset, like I have a headset that's like $130. Most of you have good headsets because you want to hear, right? Those headsets come with microphones where you can call out. Even just calling out where you died from. If you do no other callouts, is so valuable because there could be somebody on your team that's within that area, or maybe they're getting put in a clutch situation, and they would know how to better respond to where that person killed you from. It is so frustrating to me, and I don't understand why people just don't call out. I don't know if you're scared to call out. Like, I understand why girls don't because there's a lot of weird people out there, but bro, what are you doing if you're not calling out? What are you doing? Why are you not talking? Turn on your mic and talk. I don't care if you're the only one in the lobby. Talk. Whenever I solo queued, I, when I solo queued to Diamond, every single damn game, I will call out. Every single one. I will call out. And 90% of the matches, I was the only person with a mic. Nobody else wanted to talk. But multiple times in those matches, people actually responded to my callouts by making a move on the information I gave them or backing off on it. Like, communication in this game is pivotal. This game is a 5v5 team-based game mode. You cannot have ultimate success unless you have some sort of level of communication. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you have not joined a Discord, please do so. The link is in the description down below or the top right corner. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Jesus loves you, and I'll see you boys in the next one. Peace out.